All right, here we are, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Adventurous Life Information webinar all about what we're doing. And of course, Lisbon, Portugal. We're so glad that you took some time out of your busy days. We all really appreciate and um, appreciate you giving up some time for us. Uh, sit tight. Uh, we're going to have time at the end of the webinar for questions. I'm just going to hand the mic over to Linda at the moment. She's going to give us some tips on housekeeping. First of all, wanted to say hi. Hi, hi, hi. Um, I'm going to keep my screen video off most of the time, but I wanted to see, wanted to show you there's a real person here. There's a real person behind Pam. Um, and you're welcome to do that as well. Um, I also recommend that you keep your mic on mute. Um, we can mute you from here if we see that something's happened and we're hearing a lot of noise and somebody's mic is open, but generally speaking, you can keep um, that muted yourself. If you'll notice on the bottom of your screen, on the left is where you'll see the mute icon. I think most of you probably came in muted. You can just keep yourself like that until we're ready for um, question and answer time. Um, you can also share or not your video. It's up to you totally. And, um, and then the only other button on that bottom bar there that you'll wanna sort of pay attention to is the chat one. So if you have questions, that's a place to ask them. It's fine um, for you to ask them as they occur to you. So I will be paying attention to the chat role and, um, or you can just save them up till the very end. And hopefully we'll answer some of the questions during our presentation, but then I'm sure that there will be more questions that we um, haven't heard yet. So um, I'm, I'm super excited that you're here. Pam and I are just like crazy excited to be um, presenting this to you and sharing with you this, this new venture that we have both dove in d dove dived into <laughs> um, fully and in such a full way that we um, hope that you enjoy our enthusiasm and, and catch it as well. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. I think that was the only other housekeeping thing. Yeah, that's it. Um, so I'll just start by introducing myself um, from my business perspective, not so much my travel perspective. You're, we'll talk about that later, but uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. I run a business that has kind of two different divisions. One is focused on helping um, solo entrepreneurs, primarily in the coaching, consulting, um, therapy, et cetera, world to, um, to, to, to do their marketing in an easy way. So I have a lot of done for you marketing materials, marketing content. That's one side of my business. And then the other side is focused on helping entrepreneurs become those that travel the world with their business. So various trainings, and I think this offer will fall underneath it. Um, so I'm just super excited to be here and share with you. Um, there's a dog here who makes a lot of noise sometimes. So um, <laughs> if you hear anything funny, if you hear anything like sounds like trains, he's probably just jingling his collar. Um, but um, anyway, I'm glad you're here and I'll let Pam introduce herself too. Awesome. Hi, I'm Pam Ivy for those of you from Linda's group that may not know me. Uh, been around can, you put, can you put your volume up a little bit, Pam? Ooh, I, yeah, I can. How's this? <laughs> Better. <laughs> oh my God, you can see me closer. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, I've been around in business since about 2001. I'm actually celebrating my 17th year in business next month. Yay. Um, That's great. Yeah, for sure. I have like Linda, a lot of divisions or a couple of different divisions of my business. Um, I provide training and coaching services for real estate and really solo entrepreneurs. I have everyone from coaches that I coach um, to gym instructors like exercise and, and health and wellness instructors. So kind of all over the gamut of people who use me for um, particularly my profit acceleration coaching. So that's a little bit about me. Of course, as Linda said, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, our travel history coming up. So we just wanted you to see that there's like real people here and we have real businesses too. And I, like Linda, are, am super excited about introduce, introducing um, Adventurous Life to you and what it's all about. So, and yeah, yeah so as, as you know, Pam and I have recently announced this exciting new venture that we're doing. Um, it's called Adventurous Life Trips. And we will tell you more about it and answer all your questions a little bit later. 
Um, right now, we, we have something that we wanted to um, let you know about. Pam, I think you have the info on that. Oh, yeah, sure. My, there we are, my, your hosts. Okay, I'm slow already. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to stick around because, of course, we have a gift for you, and it's going to be revealed at the end of the webinar because we really want you to know all about what we're doing here so you don't just get bits and pieces um, and it's a checklist about taking you and your business abroad it's really handy and it will really kind of prompt you to think about all the different areas you need to uh, you know that needs to be on your radar when you're going to be traveling with your business awesome um sort of to give you a little bit of the lay of the land we're going to talk about what works and what doesn't when taking your business um on the road or on abroad to an international location and sticking around for a while. Um, we'll share a few tips for getting ready for a month away, but honestly, all there's so much stuff in that checklist that we're going to spend more time doing other things than going over those because it's all right there in the checklist. But um, yeah, we've, we've, um, I, I know that Pam and I both have uh, lots and lots of tips. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we also want to talk about some reasons that um, we think and have experienced why, why travel is, is actually not just good for you, but it's good for your business as well. It's not just something to kind of fulfill a bucket list item. It, it can actually be good for your business. It's definitely good for you, definitely good for your heart, your soul, but it's also can, can be really good for your business as well. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll tell you a little bit more of the details. I know many of you have already seen some of the details and, and you have some questions, but we'll talk about the Adventurous Life trips and our, our upcoming one specifically. Um, and then we'll take all your questions. And uh, there is obviously no, never a dumb question. So just either keep track or put them, put them on the, uh, in the chat area. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a good that's a good agenda. You can expect to be here for um, maybe sixty minutes, maybe seventy five, something like that. And depending on how many questions we have, we're certainly um, able to go longer than that. So, for sure. And just as you said, Linda, there's no stupid questions because I bet you dollars to donuts, somebody else is thinking the same thing. So, yeah. be the brave one <laughs> yeah. and step forward. Awesome, Pam. Pam um, there's still a little bit of uh, concern about the volume um, of your voice. Okay. I don't know if that's getting closer or if there's a something to toggle on your settings. But if if at the very least you can get, you can get closer, that would probably work. I'll get closer. I'm very uh, demonstrative, so I move around. So I will stay in front of the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. You have to make your demonstrations in the in one little square box. You can see my hands going and everything else. I'm not even Italian, but. <laughs> okay, great. All right, good. Everybody's saying they can hear you clearly. Excellent. Very good. So there's never been a, a better time to really travel with your business. You want to experience the culture as it lives to cook up collaborations with fellow traver, travelers, to run your business from places that inspire and delight you. And here Linda's overlooking a beautiful vista from a balcony. She's working on a train and I'm in South Africa with a friend working in a beautiful um, cafe, local cafe. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that has always inspired me is the beauty around me yes. um, and, and I love coffee shops as well, but um, you know what I want to convey to you is that there are some things that happen when you travel. Yes, we probably all know that because we've probably all traveled a little bit at least, if not a lot. But there are also some things that happen um, both to you and to your business, and I wanted to just run through a, a couple of those of the thing that I've noticed from from my experience in my traveling with my business which I've been doing for 11 years now um, is that my creativity goes sky high during the times that I travel and this image right here is from an experience I had I just I'm just going to give you the cliff notes version because it, it can be a long drawn out um, theatrical performance if I let it but basically, it was a, an experience in which I took off uh, on this road that you see in the slide there and in a car with my mom and her friend and was expecting to have this picturesque cobblestone road to 
travel out of this particular hilltop town that we were in. This was in Italy. And what I discovered was that the road kept getting narrower and narrower. And it got a little nerve wracking because um, as it got narrower, it, my opportunities to back up and go out got fewer. Uh, there, were, there were no roads intersecting. It was just this road or nothing. So I kept saying, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to clear out. It's going to open up. And it didn't open up. It kept getting smaller and smaller. And, and I just felt nervous about backing up. And so eventually I um, ended up having to pull the mirrors in. There was like an inch literally on either side of the car. There was no way to even get out of the windows at that point because there's only an inch. And it got really scary. And I thought, oh my God, I, you know, I just have to get to the opening. But what I got to was a dead end. Like the road just ended and became like a sidewalk. And I sat there wondering what the heck to do. And I ended up um, seeing that just through the very as it kind of turned into a sidewalk, there was a set of stairs that went through an orchard. And I thought, can I do this? <laughs> it kind of feels like the only opportunity, the only chance that I have to get out of here. And so I ended up being able to take the car through the little open way and make the turn onto the stairs. And then I bumped the car down the stairs and you know, was on the road to freedom. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is not just to entertain you. It's because when I was when I had this experience um, in Italy, in this little hilltop village, I was in the middle of the biggest product launch that I'd ever been in before. It was the first time I'd offered a particular program and I used this experience and I, and I wrote an email that tied into the product that I was offering and people wrote me and they said, oh my God, that story, like that made me sign up for your program. A lot of people did. And, and I continued to tell that story over the years because um, it just got so much of a reaction. And so that kind of creativity can be sparked sometimes only by our experiences in other countries and in travel situations. So that, that, that it doesn't have to be that dramatic for your creativity to go, to go up, but that's just kind of an extreme example of the way that works. Um, what I've noticed in terms of creativity is just that um, it's like my my brain operates almost in a different way. It it's lit up in a way that's not that it's not lit up when I'm at home in com my ordinary space, my ordinary uh, routine and stuff of life. It's just lit up, and that being lit up makes it more creative and more <laughs> just expansive. I guess is what you'd say. Well, I totally totally agree with that. I find myself very creative because. I feel Closer, like, Pat. Uh, uh, sorry, Pam. Pam. Totally <laughs> by what's around me, so that's why my creativity really goes up. What I'm seeing around me is just you know you take yourself out of the, the ordinary. So that kind of leads me to what traveling with your business can provide for you. It's definitely confidence, resilience, and what Linda was just talking about with that story that I've never heard before. That's so cool resourcefulness they totally all go up and i want you to think about empowerment because this last year we're going to talk about it a little later how i've been traveling and i've been feeling super empowered and i think that's really important and it's a big word today isn't it so that's something that um travel can definitely bring for you and the thing that i love so much about um traveling with my business is that it has enabled me to do a huge, uh, uh, so much more traveling than I ever would have because I'm able to take my business with me. Yeah. Um, and my, my days, no matter how much work I have going on, it still feels like I'm on vacation. I remember when I was in that big launch and I was creating the, like the webinar that I was going to give on which I was going to offer the program. And, and it was the day before I was just like, I was so um, inundated with work and and yet there I was in this little medieval village sitting at a coffee table outside in the gorgeous sun writing my webinar <laughs> so it felt like I was on vacation even though I was getting a ton of work done and that's that's one of the things that I love 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 about working and bringing your business along with you absolutely so it, yeah you can structure your day so they're 
part work and part vacation. Perhaps yes. not when you're in the middle of a launch, but most of the time we can do that, right? We can really schedule our days so that, you know, we work all morning, but we play hard in the afternoon, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Adventures are like dime a dozen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so about our travel experience, um, you know, one thing that I, I said to you that I've been traveling with my business for 11 years. The, the first time it was back in 2007 and um, you know, it was quite different then. <laughs> it was, um, I, I, I was traveling with my son for two months in Europe and I had to bring my business with me because I had things to do. And um, I, you know, Wi-Fi was not as prevalent as it is now. And I had to uh, I think I've told some of you I had to, in order to get wi enough Wi-Fi to have Skype calls with clients, I would um, have to lean my computer, kind of cradle my computer in my arm and lean over the canal in Venice just to get Wi-Fi and have my, my conversations, right? So it's definitely changed a lot since then, but um, I, have, I have done extensive travel with my business and I've at times gone and stayed in places for long periods of time. In fact, that's my preferred way of doing things. Um, in 2011, I spent uh, f five and a half months living in Italy. Um, I've also lived for about six weeks in Ecuador and a couple of months in Argentina, and then shorter periods of time, a couple weeks here, three weeks there, that type of thing in, in other places. And then of course, a little bit of just on the road kind of stuff, which I also do with my business, but it's, it's much more preferable for me to kind of land in a place and get to know it really well and take side trips from there, as opposed to always being on the road. So that's my travel experience. I would say that 2016, just FYI, was like my probably my biggest travel year of my life. I actually put my business on kind of a simmer, and um, and just uh, care care took it while I was traveling, and I I ended up going to 14 different countries that year. It was a crazy, wonderful, awesome experience. Um, and Pam, you've done a lot in your life as well. Yeah, I know, and, and you know, I think you just- Pam, get closer. Sorry, <laughs> sorry everybody, <laughs> reflective about what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, I've experienced, especially in the last year, but five years ago, um, my husband passed away and we used to travel a ton, but becoming a widow and having friends who are mostly married, and it makes it difficult to travel because I've tried traveling by myself but I get really, really lonesome. So I came across this group that travels as a community. And that's what I've been doing in the last year. I've been away with them a couple of times for a month at a time. Um, and it's been absolutely freaking spectacular. In the last year, I've been to Buenos Aires. Uh, and we, Lynn and I actually missed each other by a day, I think. Yeah. She was out and I was coming in. Which I know. Was sucks but you know um costa rica uh italy all over florence rome venice i was working at all of these spots by the way and um uh finishing up this year in or last year in cape town south africa which was a absolute bucket list for many people uh, so that's kind of my travel experience i, I mean i've been at a ton of places before that uh, and I'm heading actually to Singapore and Vietnam for five weeks next month. Awesome. Yes. So from all our experience, we really know what works and what doesn't work for traveling with your business. Thank you very much. So what doesn't work. Um, I, I guess we could all kind of intuit if you didn't already know it that a lack of good Wi Fi is really a problem. You see this um, slide here. I, I saw this one time, I think on Facebook, and it's, it's so true. This is the Maslow's, uh, I think it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs yes. triangle. And at the bottom, the basis of everything is Wi Fi. <laughs> It's true, right? It's ridiculous, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of silly, but it is true. So, um, you know, whether I've been exchanging homes with other people, or I've been in hotels, or I've I've rented apartments, um, 
I've only maybe 50, 50 of the time, 50% of the time had reliable Wi-Fi, and maybe even less than that. And, you know, so it's, it's important, obviously, when you have a business, you, you need to have that connection. And there are ways around it. I always have a plan A, B, C, D, E, whatever. Uh, last 2016, I think I was in Greece, and I had to go to plan H. <laughs> to get Wi-Fi, oh so that was interesting. Um, however, that's really important. Um, another thing, awkward, uncomfortable settings. You know, this is a little bit extreme, but I don't know. You you may have been in those as well. I have certainly been in some very awkward and um, strange work settings. Uh, so what that doesn't really work for. Pr pr prime productivity, let's say. Um, another thing, you know, that Pam may talk about more is is people of your own age. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just something about uh, traveling and meeting people, but if they're all not your peers, it there's something still missing. Like, you can you can meet the locals, and they can be, you know, three generations above you, or they can be three generations below you. And, and you're, there's something that's not going to get filled. But when you have peers your age, and uh, you're, you know, that are kind of like minded, and you enjoy being around, oh, man, it makes the, the trip so much more special. And then as Pam alluded to, and this has been a huge thing for me, I do a lot of solo traveling, and I have all my life ever since I was 21. And um, and I don't mind it, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten less and less tolerant of traveling on my own. I just can't tolerate going to dinner by myself um, in a restaurant, in a cool lo location. I just, I can't tolerate too much. I mean, I can do a day or two or three and be fine and I'll go walk all over a place and explore and whatnot, but I'm by day two, I'm already starting to miss having somebody to share it with. And by day three, I'm done. I'm like, okay, where, where are my people? And so I've started bringing friends along. And uh, this, this venture that we're on here together, Pam and me, kind of stemmed from that as well. You know, that, that loneliness at one point threatened. I, I, I think it was during that five-month period when I was in, in Italy. And it... Um, I said to myself at one point toward the tail end of that, I'm never traveling again unless I'm traveling with people. Now, that didn't end up being the, the case. I did end up traveling on my own several times after that, but that's how serious it was. And, I, and I've heard over and over and over again from people that that's why they're not traveling because they don't have any friends that are either set up with a business that can travel or... Um, you know, like in Pam's situation, everybody was all coupled up and she didn't want to go traveling just with couples all the time. And, you know, it was, um, it, it can be a real problem and a real deterrent to you actually, uh, you know, doing what you want and achieving that particular kind of travel dream. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you talked about the age and the peers. Closer, Pam. Sorry, I've <laughs> you talked about the age and the peers before, or the peers your own age. That's what I was talking about with the group that I joined. They're fantastic, but it's a group of what they call digital nomads that I found with this community. And literally, they're all in their mid-20s to early 30s. So I'm like 20 years older than all of these people. And while it's great, I would really love to travel with peers my own age. Yeah. And they, you know, and, and you can make it work. And I know you did, Pam. But really, do we want to be, you know, partying all night and then working in the morning? And, you know, there's a cer certain lifestyles that are we've we've mostly grown out of by the time we're we're 40 plus right exactly <laughs> yeah so what does work well obviously a really comfortable workspace with great reliable steady um wi-fi and this is a really super good important yeah yes absolutely important we also need as we said, peers to bounce ideas off of, to potentially collaborate with. It's a great reason to have our community. 
and having fascinating uh we lost the picture, but oh, <laughs> it totally threw me off. Sorry, but having fascinating dinner companions, that's another really big benefit of traveling with a group. And having people to share amazing experiences and adventures with, of course. So that all leads us into our introduction of, well, you've been hearing it for weeks now, Adventurous Life. So that's why we've created this, because there isn't that opportunity available, not for 40 plus, for sure. Certainly if you wanna join the 20 year olds, but as we said, most of us are not going to wanna do that. We really um, were the very first in the market to come to you with a travel tr or trips for 40 plus. So adventurous life is all about community and support. No more isolation, all kinds, and I mean all kinds of awesome productivity, which is really important, and travel, adventures. At the same time, it's that part work, part vacation feel that we were talking about. Yeah. So in a nutshell, um, what it is that adventurous life trips are all about is, um, co-working with your peers who are uh, who have joined you on a particular trip um, it's about community and we, we sometimes call it instant community it really is um, but within that community are even smaller communities you know you may find somebody that's a, a friend of yours for the rest of your life or you may be in touch with these people for years after traveling with them uh, you could travel with them once you could travel um, you know, you could take several trips over the course of a year. This year we're offering three altogether. Next year we'll be offering more. Um, and one of the key features is that we live in local neighborhoods and we get that experience. I don't know about you, but my experiences traveling are always like 200% better when I live in residential areas. Even if I have to take a little tram or a bus. I was in Poland last year and I, and I stayed just outside, you know, the city center in Krakow is adorable. And it's like, in some ways you'd long to be able to stay inside the city center, but I really loved staying outside, taking the bus in and getting that experience of what it's like to live here. And uh, you just meet some really interesting people. They're not necessarily people that are chatting you up because they're in the hospitality industry. They're just real people, you know, and then adventures and activities, and that's the other, these are like the four sort of underpinnings of what adventurous life trips are all about. Adventures could be anything from what you do, what you uh, choose and decide to do, you've discovered something and you, you explore it further, or it could be, um, you know, something that you, that we do, that we host, uh, we'll talk more about that 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 is a community-wide kind of thing but anyway it's the these are the, the the four pins like the four legs of the chair that that we are um offering you to sit in <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about what co-working really is because it's not something that i was familiar with not that long ago either and i'm just going to back up a couple of slides here i think it'll be handy to see this again Co-working spaces have become, they're just, they're springing up all over the world. And I really mean all over the world. I live in a town of 18,000. The town actually beside me is 18,000 as well. And we have a co-working space. It's just so freaking phenomenal because there's so many of us that work from home and we need to get out and share with people, right? So I just have warm bodies beside us for a change is, you know, a, can breed creativity just that different space. But a co-working space is literally an office um, that you can go to that where you have workspace. <laughs> I'm just thinking, how can I describe it? That's, um, it's very collaborative in style. You can totally work, sit by yourself in a corner and work on your own, but you also have people around you to collaborate with if you'd like. So there's things like shared printers and, you know, all the tools you need to do your business well, but it also gives you that community, even if you just need warm bodies beside you to stop feeling so alone. So that's what a co-working space is. 
Oh, Pam, I wanted to say something about that. Um, when I was in Italy a few years ago, I needed to do a, a, a webinar and I thought I was going to do it at my friend's house where I was staying, but her Wi-Fi was nowhere near what it needed to be for me to successfully pull that off. So I, um, so I went to a local co-working space and, and just rented a room for the day so, uh, and, and held my, my webinar in there in full privacy with a whiteboard behind me and everything. It was super great. And um, they had some some wires and stuff that I needed that I hadn't brought along with me on my trip. So um, it was fantastic experience. And that's another feature of co-working spaces is that not only are there, um, you know, areas where there are desks and plugs and all that kind of stuff for people to come to and just sit down and work at, but there's also um, like if you needed to do client calls or something like that, you could go into rooms um, that are just set up for private kind of conversations like that. And they often will have a conference room if everybody, if there was some sort of a conference that needs to be held. And, and, uh, and they usually have some space for um, little workshops. They could be workshops that are given to everybody who happens to be there, or it could be specific workshops that are held in a separate place. I mean, it's just really a malleable kind of, um, it's, it's almost like a big office that everybody's jointly using individually if that makes sense. Yeah, well said, absolutely. And uh, for instance, with our partner that uh, we've partnered with in Lisbon, um, they have what they call Skype Skype rooms, I think it is, but those are for your private calls. They ha we have meeting rooms that we're going to be using for what we're gonna be talking about um, upcoming in just a couple of moments. Uh, they're extremely flexible. And the one that we're in in Lisbon is in the hippest, area of town it's it's um really cool so yeah, that's, yeah yeah thank you that that's um you painted a much better picture well they're fun i really like them um <laughs> they are fun because you're not all by yourself all the time it's yeah just fun. so i really like that it's like a better version of a coffee shop because <laughs> yeah. a coffee shop you can go to and also experience not such great wi-fi right Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about who Adventurous Life is ideal for. Who will be your adventure partners or your partners in adventure? Well, obviously, there are men and women who have a business or a passion project. So it doesn't have to be a business, but we want you to have something that you're going to be working on and productive with while you're with us. And I don't know if you heard that, but it's for men and women. So we're inviting men, yes. We love Male Mojo as well. Um, we've had a number of applicants already and they've all been uh, women, but I know there's a number of men actually on the call right now, <laughs> but who have signed up with interest and yeah, we're um, encouraging you to come along. Because of our kind of followers, followers or Linda and my tribe, a lot of the people that will be joining us are in the coaches or freelancers kind of businesses. Those are trainers or um, speakers and that type of people. But all types of businesses, as long as you can take it on the road, is completely awesome with us. So it's for people who are really interested in shaking things up for discovering what's next. And that was my big deal for finding a community to travel with is when my husband passed away and I don't want to, you know, belabor that point or anything, but I was kind of feeling like what's next? Is that all there is? So I really needed this and it really got me out of that kind of doldrum. I don't know if that's the correct, the correct way to put it, but I needed something to shake it up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're ready to step out of your comfort zone, because this is a little different, we're going to be living in a foreign city for a whole month, but it's so cool. So that stepping out of your comfort zone allows you to feel that empowerment that we talked about earlier. And it's good for introverts and extroverts. And I'll tell you why. It's because you can come and go as you please. We don't dictate to you when you work, when you have to be with a group. Um, and when you can be at home. It's completely up to you. There's complete freedom with this group. So it really works if you need to get away for a little while too. 
and you're really interesting in living life to the fullest. That's really what we're going to give you here. If you've only done vacation travel before, like resorts and cruises and stuff like that, you're in for a really cool surprise when you're living in local areas, like in residential neighborhoods and stuff. It's really a different way to travel, and I think you're going to love it. And um, we talk about living like locals. Um, so yes, living in local neighborhoods, uh, not in hotels. Sometimes they're, uh, when we look ahead at all of our trips as a whole, we know that sometimes we will be in uh, separate apartment buildings, you know, separate apartments in different places that are hopefully all kind of close together. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we'll be in a single building that has availability for everybody. Um, but in general, we will, we will always be in local neighborhoods, not tourist neighborhoods, you know, not, not hotels uh, and that sort of a thing, but living like, and you know, living in places where people actually live and where life goes on in those places. Mm -hmm. um, they will have cooking facilities, they'll have uh, laundry available, availability. Oftentimes they will have washing machines and whatnot in their, in their own rooms. Um, in, their, in, in individual apartments, there will be washing machines and uh, whatnot facilities. Sometimes there will be um, coin facilities in different places, but there will be laundry available. You don't have to send your laundry out or anything like that. Um, uh, you can eat out or you can buy groceries and eat in, you know, any of the above. Um, I just find that, that that is, that enriches my experience so much to live in areas where people actually live. And sometimes I'm just an observer and I watch how they live. And sometimes I interact because I'm one of those introverts. So sometimes I, I, I interact with people and I get to know them. But in any case, I still feel like I'm there and I'm really experiencing it. My favorite thing in the world is to be mistaken for a local. <laughs> I'd get such a kick out of that when somebody asks me directions, like I, you know, like I'm from there and should know how to get places. I just melt inside. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It, there's nothing like it, honestly. So here's some of the things that we'll be providing through um, Adventurous Life if you join us. So. Right away, um, you're going to come in on a Sunday. That's All of our trips are going to start on a Sunday. We'll let you get settled in and things. But on the Monday, as a whole entire group, Linda and I are going to take you on a city tour. So we're going in most of the cities that we're going to go to, there are hop-on, hop-off city tours. And I bet you a lot of you have been on those. They are fantastic for getting a lay of the land. So we're all as a group, and it's on Linda and I, it's included in your trip, um, take you on this hop on, hop off tour. So you can really decide right away, oh my goodness, or you can see, oh, I definitely have to go back to that. I really want to see this. It'll just kind of give you a good feeling for the city right away. Um, something that's so amazing, of course, we've been talking about a lot is the built-in community. You have instant community with Adventurous Life. So if you want to go somewhere, like go visit a castle, because there are tons of them in our area, um, a castle or a fortress or a museum. There's lots of cool museums. There's an amazing aquarium. I've heard it's one of the best in the world. If you want to go do things like that, just put that out there to the group and see who wants to join you. That is so cool. Something else that I find with other groups that I've traveled with that I find is so important because we want to be productive, we want to be in productivity, is once a week we're going to get together as a group, maybe two groups, um, to set up our goals for the upcoming week. And we're going to talk about accountability, but we're not only going to talk about accountability in these weekly, weekly kind of get togethers. We're also going to highly encourage you, meaning we really want you to, <laughs> partner up with an accountability partner. So you check in every couple of days. So we really make sure that we're moving forward in our business. Next, we're actually gonna be talking to some local people in Lisbon to come and talk to our group, whether it be about uh, what you need to see in the city, it could be a chef, perhaps, that gives us a cooking lesson, 
or it could be somebody who um, talks about the local entrepreneur scene. Something that gives us a, our local boost of business. So we're gonna invite locals in to talk to us. Linda and I also have some really cool ideas about little mini meetings that we'll get together. And remember, these are all optional. Um, these little mini, mini meetings will be themed like the Monday Motivation Mojo meeting, where we'll just, we'll get everybody geared up for the upcoming week. Maybe a Wellness Wednesday or Freestyle Friday. We could talk about whatever you want. And of course, um, I can't, oh, of course, uh, member shares. So something that I've done, and this was uh, at cruises that I've been in, business cruises, is tool shares. Those things are amazing for allowing us all to become aware of free and paid tools that people are using in their business that we might not be uh, aware of. And there's some that I've learned from other people that I don't know how I lived without before. So those are just a few of the activities that we'll be, be conducting with the community. Um, we're really going to be fostering community. It's, it's such an important part of our travel group. So Linda is going to talk to us a little bit about some typical days. Whoops, I was talking and I had myself muted. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, thanks for all the questions that are coming in. That's awesome. Yeah, um, just some, some possible days. I wanted to give you a feel for what it might look like for you, you know, um, it, because it's, it's pretty free form, but you could do your morning routine, um, get to work, work for a few hours, uh, maybe take a walking tour. I, I love these walking tours that places have all over the world now. Um, and you could do that alone or with some other people from our group. You could have dinner with the group and then go home and answer some more emails. Remember, we're going to be in Lisbon. We're going to be nine hours ahead, I believe. I'm not positive, but I, we're either eight or nine hours ahead from Pacific time. So that's like um, five or six hours ahead Eastern time. Yeah, we're six um, hours ahead. Yeah. So, you know, you might be answering emails, doing stuff with your team later in the evening, and, um, and then you say goodnight. Or you might do your morning routine, then you might just head on out and explore the city. That's what uh, my friend Pat and I used to do when we were in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. We'd, we'd go on this big city exploration walk for uh, one to two hours, and then have a late lunch, and then begin our work, uh, you know, like three or four, or something like that. And then maybe meet for drinks, and then say goodnight. Or you could do a day trip, you know, start out and then you go and take off for the whole day. And it doesn't have to be a Saturday or a Sunday. You could do this during the week. It doesn't matter. But, um, and you could do this by yourself. You could do this with, with other members of our group. And then maybe you put in a couple hours work in the evening, say goodnight. So those are just some ideas of how you can um, jigger your days, you know, how you can organize your days. Sorry about that. I was trying to unmute myself and it kept changing the things. But I wanted to mention while you uh, were talking about that with, you know, you can structure your days however you want. With our partner, the co-working space, we have access to it 24-7. Just for yeah. our group, but we'll have access 24-7. So if because of the time difference, if you need to go in later or earlier, it's going to be available to you. Cool. Yeah. So these are Linda's feet, by the way. <laughs> Those are my toes. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you need to do on your own. Others you should never do alone. So let's hit the road together. I love that. <laughs> so what is your next step? That's what we want to ask you. If you've forgotten your dreams, isn't it time to say yes to yourself? So hello, Lisbon. Yeah, hello, Lisbon. We, we picked Lisbon because uh, we happened to know that it was on a lot of people's bucket list. Some, some people who are actually already committed to going have even been there before. So it's not just like the kind of thing that you do if, you're, if you've never been. I've never been, and I'm super excited about going. But we just knew that Lisbon offered everything that we wanted um, in a location, a nice climate, 
a nice kind of a small town feel with still a lot of big town um, offerings. Uh, some very cool and uh, vibrant energy, both in this, the entrepreneurial scene and also in the food food scene, um, which is very important to me. Yeah, so I was just going to say, food is always <laughs> on Linda's mind, and you'll see she's so tall and slim, I don't get it. but <laughs> <laughs> I love my good food. Um, th this uh, image that you're looking at right now, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, wait, we're not going to San Francisco, we're going to Lisbon, why are we looking at a picture of San Francisco? And then I discovered that this is a sister bridge to the Golden Gate Bridge in California. And I just live an hour away from there. So, I, you know, I travel over it all the time. I was like, why is that there? But it's actually a sister bridge. Um, so we just wanted to page through a few of the uh, lovely, lovely places. I know we've got a few people on the on the uh, call who are quite familiar with Lisbon and um, maybe even live there. I don't know if Helen Helen Wil Wilkie uh, speaks Portuguese and uh, I think may have even lived in Lisbon anyway, knows it well. So maybe she can tell us a few things about it later. But um, yeah, the, the just the the variety of, of beauty and things to offer is pretty amazing. Helen, are you there? Oh, goodness. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, good. Anything you want to tell us just in brief about Lisbon? Because you're pretty familiar with it, right? I'm fairly familiar with it. I've never stayed there for a long period of time, but my late husband was from Portugal. And um, so I always had the benefit of being with a local and, and you know, his whole family were all local. So that makes a big difference in itself. And I'm sure that with your arrangements that you've been making, that you'll, there'll be times when you will have local, local people to just kind of show you around. And the, yeah. people, the people are fabulous in Lisbon. They're, they're very, very anxious to, to be of use to people and, and they're very friendly. And you see that picture of these tarps that you've got on the, <laughs> on the screen now, those are called Pastéis Benata and they are to die for. <laughs> I can't wait because every time I googled uh, Lisbon food, voluminous pictures of those of those tarts just kept yeah. showing up. I know they're so good. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Helen. You're welcome. And you can see there's lots of beaches too for those of you who like beach, not me, but there's a lot of people that do. I know. <laughs> yeah, I like walking on the beach. Yes. Um. Yeah, and there's some great day trips as well. One of those uh, was a uh, Cascais. I don't, I don't have the pronunciation yet. I'm gonna do some, a little bit of Portuguese training before I go. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. Oh, and the other thing is, there's a festival during the period of time that we're there that's a, a, apparently a world-renowned festival and so exciting looking. It just looks amazing. It's, um, it's happening on June 12th. And um, I think they call it the, Mar uh, maybe it's like St. Andrew's Festival, the Marchas Populares. But um, yeah, super, super excited about, about seeing that. It looks like a real treat, a visual treat for the eyes. And um, for those of you who love wine, we are in wine country as well. Portugal is known and has a lot of awards, award-winning wines. So. I, I like to drink Diet Coke out of a wine glass because I don't like wine, but I still love to go on wine tours. So <laughs> I'll be on those tours. <laughs> I love it. Those of you who've been are, are, are uh, co making comments and sharing it with everyone. The water's warm. Um, it's just so cool. Beware that you could be overcharged for coffee and meals. <laughs> So really what we wanted to just, um, the, the whole reason for our doing this is um, both for ourselves, like it's a selfish venture on our part, but it's also something that we know, I've known for five years, um, oh, more than that, how many people are eager to do this, but one barrier or another stood in the way. You know, either it was, I don't quite know what to do and where to go and how to set things up, or I don't have anyone to travel with, or, you know, I... I haven't quite figured out how I can be gone for a month. Um, all of those things are, are, are pieces that this, uh, this really solves and is a solution for. So um, it's, to me, it's about freedom. It's about this, this vast feeling of freedom and, and having that, um, I, I, it's a paraphrase of, a, uh, of an Irish 
proverb, I think it's, you know, having the wind at your back and the road rising to meet you. I just think that's, that's like, if I can die with that, those experiences, I will be so happy. And therefore I'm, I could already be happy. Um, but also it's about you, you know, it's about what lights you up and what feeds your soul. And if you're not doing things right now that are lighting you up in that way or feeding your soul in that way, then it's time. Don't you think it's time? Absolutely. And we've made it super affordable. It's kind of like a no brainer. This is our pioneer pricing. So listen for one whole month. Um, can I just ask that any, if you're unmuted, could you just mute yourself? You hear a lot of rustling in the background there. Um, for one whole month, our pricing with the early bird, which is until February 6th, is only $24.97. Or, of course, we have payment plans to fit your budget um, for payments of $6.97. And if you're a little nervous about the full month, of course, we really, really encourage you to do that because you're really immersing yourself into the experience. But we do offer two weeks as well. And again, if you apply by February 6th, there is a $200 savings. The two weeks must be taken just, you know, for um, us to be figuring out your housing and stuff. It's two weeks before the first two weeks of the trip or the last two weeks of the trip. So that's $17.97 with the early bird. But you got to catch that before February 6th. So really, it's a no-brainer. Um, I know I went to Mexico for two weeks and it cost me $5,000. So <laughs> it's really a no-brainer. And what that covers is okay. your, your accommodations, the co-working space, um, the activities that we'll be hosting and doing for you, um, and um, your instant community. <laughs> sure. it, it, it covers your instant community. I love that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so all you really have to do is get yourself over there and feed yourself most of the time. Okay. <laughs> I, by that, I don't mean that you have to starve yourself. I just mean that we'll be picking up some of it some of the time. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody that, though. That was going to be a surprise. Whatever. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. <laughs> so, so what we want you to do is to apply. And the reason that we have an application process is we really want to um, make sure that this is the right fit for you and the right and that and that you're the right fit for us uh, we're, we're not you know trying to establish any clicks any high school exclusions or anything like that but we just want to know that this really works for for everybody and, and so what we want you to do is just um, click on the button and the the, uh, the link will show I, do you have the link right there anyway um, just fill out the application process it tells us a little bit about yourself and then once we've received that, then we'll reach out to you um, within three days of receiving it and schedule uh, a time for us to talk. And Pam and I will both jump on probably Skype with you um, because that way, whether she's in Vietnam or in Canada or I'm wherever, you know, that we can, um, we can all hear, or reach each other. So we'll talk by Skype and, and just get to know each other and, you know, and then we'll say, hey, would you like to come? Or you'd say, hey, I want to come. And so that's, that's our application process. This time around, we are, um, we're limiting the, the attendees to 20, just because it being our first one, we really want to make sure that we, you know, that we get it right and that we can accommodate larger groups. We anticipate in the future taking as many as maybe 35. Um, but the first one we're going to limit to 20. So, and we've already got people who've already committed. So you definitely want to get get in there and apply. Um, by applying, you're not having to make any kind of a commitment, and you're not having to put any kind of a deposit just to apply. This is really just a way for us to to you know get each other on the books and then have a conversation. Perfect. So, as we promised, here is the link for the checklist that taking you and your business abroad. It's a really helpful checklist, let me tell you. So, it's adventurouslife.io forward slash checklist. 
We don't really know what .io stands for. Um, it's one of the new um, uh, things that you can uh, attach, you know, instead of a .com, it's, it's a kind of a trendy, trendy way of, of doing that. But we decided that it means international organization. And maybe it does, but that's what we decided. <laughs> that's great. So pick up your checklist at adventurouslife.io forward slash checklist. <laughs> And then the application, um, yeah, there you go, is uh, adventurouslife.io forward slash apply. So, um, yeah, we, we are here and available for questions now. I'm going to run through what has already been asked and just kind of start top to bottom and make sure that we have um, answered questions. Um, and then if you if if you have additional questions, I guess right now would be the time to stick them in the chat. That's probably the best way to do it. And then if you feel like you need to talk, then just let us know and, and um, you know, we can have the open mic thing. Um, so, uh, yeah. Can you join part of the services, i.e. the co-work and the community, but, um, find she this person uh, pet sits and house sits so if she's already there doing a pet sit or a house sit can she um, can she join us still you know is there a way to do that and the answer was um, yes we, we can make those kinds of accommodations it's pretty few and far between um, but yeah certainly we could make uh, an arrangement for that so if you have family for example you have a place to stay but you still are interested in in doing this we can we can make that happen for you yeah, we'd, we we'd love it if you were living living where we're living but you know sometimes um, other reasons take you to another location um, uh, da, 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 da. Are May 20th to June 16th yes uh, where are you going this year other than Lisbon and what are the dates we have on our website? I don't know Pam if you can um, I don't know that it's not necessary, but on the website if you click the tab that says destinations We have the dates that we are traveling, but we have not yet picked the dates What we're doing with this first offering is asking people where else would you like to go because really um, the exciting thing is that uh, as we get going and as we roll this out, you could take three trips with us. You could take six trips trips with us over the course of a year. I mean, you could rent out your house for six <laughs> months and use that income to come with us. You know, there's so many ways to do this. It's really exciting. Um, so, so we will we will be rolling out our trips uh, in a little bit. We're probably not going to roll out the next two trips until. I don't know, sometime late February, probably. Um, but we are taking requests, let's put it that way. So we've, we've already had several requests for Italy. Um, we have some ideas ourselves of cool places to go, but we really want to know where do you want to go? Um, let's see. What if an adult family member is interested in visiting for a few days? If you don't mind sharing a bed with them, <laughs> it shouldn't be a problem. We, we will, um, in some cases, we're going to have shared accommodation. And by that, I mean an apartment, but it'll have three bedrooms or two bedrooms. So you share the common space, but you will always have your own private bedroom. So, um, and in some cases, those private bedrooms, while they're meant for just one person, they'll have two beds. They just sometimes come that way. So, you know, that, that would be, that would be totally fine. Um, if the person wanted to join us for events and stuff like that, I'm sure we could work out, you know, a, a small, a small amount to contribute to, to the group for that. Um, do you have access to group airfare? No. We don't, but what, once you apply, um, we're going to be providing you with an information package for those of you who have 
already paid, <laughs> you know, who have already um, committed to the trip, that's going to be coming to you shortly. And um, we've listed a whole bunch of really great spots to find your flights for the best price. So I've been accumulating that over the last year with all the travelers that I've been dealing with, especially the millennials I've been living with over the last year. They have the best resources, man. Yeah, pick their brains, man. They are awesome. Um, the, other thing, the other thing to know is that once you've committed, once we have a group of people that's committed and going, um, you know, a two and three months and stuff in advance of the actual trip itself, we'll be meeting together or, or communicating together in some fashion so that we can um, nail down any additional questions, you know, like, do I need to bring um, an HD, a HDMI cord? Uh, you know, do, do I need a, you know, all those kinds of questions that might come up as you're beginning to pack and think about packing and, and all that stuff. We'll be, we'll be having some meetings together virtually before we get there just to make sure that you've got all that. Um, and with regard to Lisbon, we, you don't need a, if you're coming from the US, you don't need a visa. Um, if you're coming from Canada, same thing. Um, there's, uh, if you're coming from somewhere else, uh, if you're coming from the, the European Union, you need nothing. Um, if you're coming from a, a country outside of European Union or Canada or US, I would just Google it. Um, a, a lot of times there are no visas required in cases where we know that there will be visas required, we'll certainly mention that um, in, in the trip description. Um, and then immunization, I mean, I don't, the best, probably the best resource is for you to go to the travel.gov site. Tra I think it's travel.gov, G-O-V. Or go to CDC Worldwide for those, because I mean, um, Americans always think American resources. <laughs> See, that's the, I know. That's the beauty. Linda's <laughs> in the U.S. and I'm in Canada. So if you go to the global CDC uh, website or the one that Linda mentioned too, I mean, it's going to tell you as well. Um, that's where you can find out about any inoculations that you need. Yeah. For you, really, uh, for the most part, it's just being up to date on your usual travel inoculations. But do check. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then Carolyn asked, um, the, are the prices in U.S. dollars? And yes, the, the prices that are um, on the page, the slide that we showed you are U.S. dollars. And this information, by the way, is all on our website, adventurouslife.io. So if you're missing anything, um, you, you know, you can always go back and find the information there. And Anne, um, Lucia and Carolyn both asked, what area of Lisbon is it? We have not firmed up our housing yet. We are negotiating with a couple of different places at the moment, um, but our workspace is in the Alcantara area, which is a super hip um, area right near the river. It's a really cool area. Yeah, and overlooking the bridge, not overlooking, but um, you know, with a bridge view. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. Um, Jen asks, are accommodations private with private bath? Sometimes, Jen, it, it depends on what we end up with in, in our negotiations. Um, sometimes there will be uh, rooms with the bathroom and, and suite, as they say, and other times there'll be a shared bathroom, but our uh, objective is to not ever have more than two people sharing a bathroom. Yes. So, you know, all those four bedroom places with a half bath or one bathroom the, the, those aren't for us that's correct because we wouldn't want that so <laughs> um, this is an interesting question advice on how you create a daily expense budget do you have anything for that Linda a daily expense budget no but that would be a really good thing for us to develop I, I know that for me uh, when I travel I I, um, I have breakfast always taken care of because I, I have a little packet that I just make a, a shake out of. So I'm done with breakfast and then I figure, you know, what my, what my lunch cost might be. But remember, you can always cook in your home too. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I think about that. I think about dinner and I think about any kind of tours that I might want to go to. But, um, you know, Pam and I in our, in our 
respective experiences, we, we've come across a lot of different options in different cities, and uh, a lot of times they're available in multiple cities. So for example, these walking tours, they, these are free walking tours. Uh -huh. And you can give a donation at the end or not, you know, that's really up to you. But um, I've been on several free walking tours and I love them. They're so interesting and they're so reasonable. Um, so any kind of outside activities that you might want to, um, so I would just come up with kind of an average daily amount that you might expect to pay. Uh, like maybe you say, I'm, I'll make my lunch and bring it with me to the co-working space. So my breakfast and my lunch are on my own and then I'll go out for dinner um, with the group or something like that. Then just figure that in. Um, and then airfare is, is relatively, I think that the, the rates that we checked are um, like for the, for the Pacific Coast, or the flights are going to be more expensive than from the East Coast. And they were still under a thousand for this time of year. The last time I checked. Yes. So. Um, oh, Natasha yeah. sent me a um, really, really good question. Uh, talk about medical coverage. Do we check with our current plan on in international coverage, or is it an option for international coverage? What's your experience? For me personally, I worked with a Canadian travel company. Um, to provide me with, I, I have a year yearly plan for travel insurance because I travel so much and it's costing me, I think it's like a hundred bucks for the whole entire year. So I recommend that you check um, with local, I know in Canada we have something called kinetics.ca, I think it is, where we can get quotes on travel and as well as um, auto and life. And that's how I found my travel company. There are uh, I, travel groups that you can check with too if you want to Google that. I have a recommendation. I don't have it at my fingertips, but uh, it's something that I would be giving to the whole group um, once once you've you know decided that you're going. Um, so what my experience is is that sometimes your existing health insurance will work in another country or like they'll cover certain things in another country up to a month or up to a certain period of time. And um, I know that was the case for me when I was in Italy, they cover, it covered up to a month. And then after that, I had to have something else. And it wasn't like it was, you know, it wasn't like I could go to a Kaiser in Italy, a Kaiser Permanente in Italy, but th there was some sort of coverage, you know, that they were able to extend. So it really is a matter of checking with your own insurance and seeing what they cover. And then I do have um, a link, there's uh, something that I've gotten um, when I travel for longer periods of time and I just don't have it in my head right now, but I'm happy to share it. What is a Kaiser Permanente, please? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a health insurance organization. Okay. A, a health care organization, sorry. Another amazing question from Natasha. You go, Nat Natasha. Is this an IRS write-off for tax purposes? In most cases, I'm going to say a yes because I write it off uh, my travel. But you always, because you can't take our word for it, legally or, you know, accounting purposes, always check with your accountant. But in most cases, I'm going to tell you, oh, yeah, you can write this off. Yeah, I think a good case can be made um, in almost every case. But again, we're not accountants. We can't do that official advising. But um, I certainly make the case in a couple of different ways. Um, in, in this kind of a setting, you know, what kind of business are you going to be doing with people that are going there who are, you know, you're going to meet other people that perhaps you end up partnering with, or maybe you're going to learn a, a particular thing about how to work and, and travel at the same, you know, you can, you can use it as education. Or um, if it is something that really raises your profile. In fact, I wanted to mention this earlier when Mara was talking about this, traveling and, and doing your business internationally and then writing about it, both on Facebook and to your email list and then sharing the experience with your followers, your, your followers in your business, um, is a huge way of raising your profile with them. People really pay attention. They really, um, their, their, their interest and intrigue is, is peaked and perked. <laughs> um, when they, when they, uh, understand that you are um doing this from abroad and you know it's just like something that they've been 
maybe thinking about doing themselves or they, um, yeah, they're just fascinated by it, like they're living vicariously through you. So if, if you can make that argument that this is raising my profile, uh, you know, I'm doing it intentionally for this reason to raise my profile, you know, that could be another argument that you make or another justification for it. But I think that there are numerous ways potentially to, to um, you know, to make sure that it's deductible and it's just a matter of double checking with your accountant. And Jan has said, um, does this mean my photographer husband can join? Oh my God, yes, we want a photographer. No. <laughs> 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 Linda and I are actually looking into hiring a Lisbon, a local Lisbon photographer to take pictures of us, but uh, that's maybe we don't need to now. <laughs> maybe we don't need to. Yeah. He is more than welcome to join us. Um, there is not a couple's price. And um, simply because these, the pricing that we're offering is freaking phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. And um, it, it's really, it's super reasonable, honestly. We're, um, yeah, it, it, that's the per person price. I hope that works. And Carol Marie said, I'm, I'm interested in bringing my partner as well. Way, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, anything else we missed here? I don't know if you um, can hear it in our voices, but we're kind of excited about it. <laughs> Abigail says, can you share pics of the accommodations? Um, I think we have some of those on the website. They're, they're not the exact accommodations, but they're what we're, what we're looking for in terms of well, um, we, yeah, that's, yeah, that's we, we, I, I have extensive experience uh, living locally in other countries and I am um, I'll, I'll be applying that and also we're working with local uh, property managers too so they know what we want I know what we want and we're gonna make sure that they're that they're um, good accommodations oh and preciosa you're on the call she's a friend of mine who's Portuguese as well so she's saying oh, nice. Uh, they're five hours ahead. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> um, curious if the co-working space will be used only by your group, or is it a co-working space that locals use too? The second part. It is a co-working space that locals use too. And it's really cool. So you can um, really connect with the locals there as well. Um, will you be there? Oh, this is such a great question from Lynette. Um, will you be there as a kind of coach during morning work time? Like if I want to test out uh, the technology to present an online workshop, would you be available to practice? Um, a couple of things. I think there would be multiple people willing to practice with you just yeah. out of collaboration nature. Um, I, I, Pam, neither Pam nor I have talked about this, but it's certainly possible that we could make ourselves available for some coaching while you're there. It would not be part of the, of the rate. It would have to be like a separate arrangement, but we could definitely be available for um, business coaching, um, that type of thing. So w one way or another, I think you'd have a lot more of what you need and want, Lynette, than being by yourself somewhere. Yeah, but definitely your cohorts, <laughs> your um, at the workspace or not, just somebody in the community would certainly help you with stuff like that. And that's something we'll also do um, is host a, this is what I need and this is what I can offer kind of round table discussion so that we can really be of um, use and of help to each other. Yeah. Um, Jan also asked, um, is it possible to extend your stay beyond a month? And um, that's certainly possible. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be anything that you'd need to arrange with us unless perhaps you, you loved the apartment that you were staying in and wanted to stay there longer, in which case we could just connect you with um, the people that you need to connect with about that. Mm -hmm. So certainly, uh, absolutely something that you could do. Um, I'm looking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see the excitement, though, with all the questions. Great questions. 
Greece. I see Greece. I've been there a few times. I love the islands. <laughs> uh, what about time zones differences for using workspace to deliver coaching online? Oh yeah, I think we answered that. Yes, the space is available 24 seven. Absolutely. Um, and do we reschedule everything? Meaning, I think what you mean by that is, do you reschedule the normal time that you do um, uh, coaching? And you can, this is up to you. You can either work with your clients and figure out a different time to work with you while you're gone, or you can do it at the same time and just use the, the co-working facility to do that. Um, you're absolutely able to use it 24-7. Um, because many co-working spaces in San Diego have millennial music going on all the time. Not so great for me. Oh, I get you. Same here. None I, of the co-working uh, spaces I've been in have music going all the time. Yeah, and so that's good. That I highly recommend anyway is nose, n nose, noise canceling earphones. <laughs> I was I just going to say the same them. thing. <laughs> I just like to have them on the airplane. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Lynette, you're saying that a $2,500 gamble on getting the coaching you need, this is not a coaching program. This is a tr working travel, kind of co-working travel adventure. So it's definitely not a coaching program. This isn't a full-time retreat or anything like that. This is providing you with um, the opportunity to travel and see the world to co-work with your peers and have instant community with accommodations included. We kind of liken it to a, 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 like a combination of, so it's, it's not a tour, it's not a retreat, and it's not um, you, know, you going somewhere and working on your own. It's, like a, it's a combination of, of everything. We will be doing some uh, retreat like things in that we have some little workshops and um, we certainly invite you to be a presenter or anybody to present their material if they want to um, you know just in short snippets as we as we arrange so there will be retreat like elements but it's not exclusively a retreat there will be tour like elements but it's not a tour yeah. and there it's a definitely a living uh, uh, like a living overseas experience but this time with the addition of your business brought along with you nicely put <laughs> any other questions yeah i think we've answered them all and lynette keep in mind that's for a month that's for an entire month 2500 for an entire month of um of housing and um, activities and um, collaborative uh, opportunities and um, some some tours and dinners, um, you know, included and uh, the co-working space and all the arrangements made for you. It's a super, super deal. Yes. The dates again are uh, May the 20th through June 16th. So our first trip is one month long. Actually, all the trips this year are one month, and then we're going to revisit stuff. Yep. So um, any, any last questions? We are super excited about getting your applications and scheduling a conversation with you. And um, um, Oh, how much was the month-long price? It's $24.97 for one month. And then the, the, the two-week price was... Seventeen ninety seven, and these are the early bird prices. At right, hundred dollars if you're after February sixth. Right. Oh, and thank you for. Um, in fact, if you have suggestions for uh, places that you'd you'd like us to go in the future, please type them in here. That way, we can sort of capture it all in one place. That would be awesome. Um, Jan just gave us a few. San Miguel de Allende in Mexico, Portugal, and Spain. Um, Barcelona great. is definitely on our list. We yep. really wanted to do it this time, but there's a little bit of political unrest there right now. So it'll be at a future trip. You can bet your bottom dollar because both Linda and I love it there. Yep. We're also looking at places like uh, Prague, 
I actually got engaged there. It's so beautiful. Oh, Prague um, is amazing. Medellin, Colombia, which is absolutely stunning. The, the group that I travel with right now is currently there. Um, Buenos Aires, oh, which definitely. we both love. Yes. yes. Oh my God, you'd love it too. Um, South Africa is also on our uh, radar because it is so high on everybody's um, bucket list. And having just come back from there, I didn't really know what to expect. It is amazing for traveling and working. So there's a number of really cool places on our hit list. And then also places in Asia. I'm, I'm not as familiar with um, Asia in terms of my own travels, but I'm eager to um, experience that. I know that there are some um, amazing, you know, entrepreneurial hubs in the, in the Asian part of the world. So that's yeah. right. And I have totally been talking about Bali. I have friends there right now who uh, keep extending their trip because they love it so much. And yeah. Thailand is another one that's huge with a co-working community. And as I said, at the top of the hour, I'm heading to Singapore. That's just kind of for a few days of vacation. And then I'm heading over to Vietnam for four weeks to work. So love it. All right. Well, let's let's wrap up. And um, if you have any additional questions, uh, don't hesitate to shoot us an email. Um, if something you know, if you if you didn't want to ask it right now, you want to ask it privately, or else you just something occurs to you later, um, just shoot us an email. This is a real, um, you know, we we are very present in this in this business. You're not going to be having to run through a lot of. Um, team members to get to us, you know, just write us and we'll respond. We're, we're very much a part of this in, um, in our, and you know, we are on it. Yeah. <laughs> you can email we're us. with you. <laughs> you can email us directly at hello at adventurouslife.io, that international organization. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. This has really been a treat. Um, we hope that you'll join us. So apply, apply, apply. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye now.